Now, the next thing we're going to talk about, it, it's honestly going to take me about two minutes to really go over it. Uh, then we'll start, have to start practicing it later. But what we're going to do is make the transition from here to integrals. Here's what you need to know. It's what I've already told you, but I'll, I'll reiterate it. What we're going to talk about is the definite integral. These, these things before, the integrals you were doing were called indefinite. They had a plus C because you weren't quite sure about the area. It was an area function, but you didn't know what the area was. Now we're going to be able to find the area. Wait for it. There we go. Here it is again. Last time I'll show it to you. Area. Right now you know area as this. some interval e to b. There's another interpretation for it. It's very, very similar to saying this. Remember how you calculated derivatives with limits? And then we found a pattern for derivatives. And you said, to heck with these limit things. This is easy. I like this. Right? Derivatives are great because they don't deal with limits, which is in fact a fallacy because derivatives are all about limits. You just don't expressly calculate the limit. You understand? Same thing with an integral. An integral is all about limits, just like this. This is called a Riemann sum, uh, or Riemann sum, well, however you pronounce his name incorrectly, that's what most people say. Uh, is the, the Riemann sum is taking all those rectangles and adding them up together. That's why it's called a sum. It doesn't really matter where that point is. We typically use left, right, or midpoints, but it doesn't matter. It's an arbitrary point. What that says is that when I add up all these, these rectangles, I do basically the same thing going from a, a limit using a derivative using limits to a derivative using the shortcuts that we basically do. And that's what we can do here as well. We say, you know what? The notation here really meshes up very nicely. I've shown this to you one other time, but now I'll show you exactly what we're going to have on top of this. When you take a limit of a sum, you basically add an infinite number of rectangles. Adding an infinite number of rectangles is denoted with this. That's an integral. Adding an infinite number of rectangles based on some function in terms of x. Where does the c sub k go? We're not talking about a specific point. We're talking about any arbitrary point that goes throughout the entire span of your, your x's on an infinite number of uh, inter sub-intervals. And it's based on whatever variable you're talking about, dx, the width of each rectangle. If the width of each, each rectangle goes to 0 because n goes to infinity, that becomes that idea of a limit, limiting the, the x width, that 0. Remember with, with our derivative, we took the x distance and we made it 0. Do you remember that? And we're taking the distance between two points and making it 0. And that's what we're doing here, the same exact idea. Only now we're adding together a whole bunch of little bitty rectangles instead of finding uh, the slopes between two little teeny points. You get it? That's the idea. Now where's the A and the B come in? Here's where the A and the B come in. On an interval A to B, on an interval A to B. This says this, basically. Add up all the rectangles with the height of f of x that have a width of a very infinitesimally small value from your starting point A to your ending point of B. Can you already do integrals? Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm going to show you next, probably next time and the time after that, how to deal with this. It's not hard. I think you'll really enjoy it. Okay, so we are still learning about something called the definite integral. And our idea was that we can basically do 
Well, the, the idea was we had a summation, right? We took a limit of it. That was the area. We also made that into this integral and said, well, what the integral stands for is basically a limit of a sum. It's adding up all the rectangles where the partitions are. Actually, you know what? For that to work, I have to make the statement. I got to qualify it a little bit. You know how we made equal partitions? Those don't have to be equal. You know how we made left endpoints and right endpoints and midpoints? They didn't have to be there. They could be any point within any type of partition that you wanted to make. Because as soon as you make the number of rectangles go to infinity, those all, no matter what the size, they all go close to zero. Does that make sense? Even though some are closer than others, it doesn't matter. They're all going to zero anyway. So it doesn't even matter if they were equal. We did that for the sake of making it easy on us. Uh, but this is what this means. It means adding up sum all the little rectangles, no matter what their size is, as we go the number of rectangles to infinity. So basically this is a limit of a sum, and I told you where that comes from, that's like the delta x. So this is the same thing we had before, which was called net signed area. This is net signed area. <coughs> so basically this is this. And this is what you've been doing your whole, like, <laughs> a lot, right? A lot. Aren't you glad I started you at, like, whatever I started you at? You did it my way, right? The way I showed you? Hope so. Try to. I did it my way. Try to. <laughs> it's it's a lot of effort, not a lot of results. Now, before I tell you how to actually compute these with very little problems, because you, you basically already know, I'm going to show you geometrically what this means, okay? I'll give you just three examples on, on what exactly we are doing here. So, when we talk about geometrically what this represents let's talk about the integral from 1 to 4 of 2 dx now firstly can you tell me what the bounds of this integration is okay so <coughs> the x should start at 1 and end at 4 that's where our area starts and stops what's our function can you graph 2? What, what is it? Straight line. Very good. Straight line? Or straight line? So basically horizontal line is what you, you probably mean by that. And it's not this way, it's this way, yeah? So this is our, our 2, our y equals 2, our f of x equals 2. And we're going from... 1 to 4, this, folks, is what this integral represents. It's this area right here. That's what that is. Now, for constants, that's pretty easy, right? It just says, oh, we have this, this horizontal line. We're going from one spot to another. Let's actually calculate the area geometrically. What's our, our base? Three. Good. 1 to 4 gives you a 3. What's our height? Two. So what's the area? Six. Here's what I know right now. This integral is equal to 6 square units, whatever the units are. But it's an area. That's what this talks about. It says, look, you can even partition it. No matter what you do, you add up the areas of those rectangles, it's going to equal 6. You got me? That's what we're talking about. Let's talk about a couple more. Let's do, uh, let's do this one. How about x plus 2? Could you graph x plus 2? Hope so. Hope so. So x plus 2 says I'm going to start at 2. My slope is 1, so this is going to give me. And I'm going to go from negative 1 to 2. And this is the area that I would like to represent, is the area of this region. How do you find area of that region? Could you do it? Geometrically, could you do it? 
How might you how might you do it? Probably a triangle and, and a rectangle is how I would do that. So maybe break this one off right here. You okay with that? Let's find the area. What's the area of this rectangle down here? Three. How are you getting three? So a, a base of three, a height of one. So the purple area is three. Okay, very good. How about the area of this this region? Let's do it in blue. What's the base of our, our triangle? What's the height? Sure. And we divide by two. So the area is also three. What's the total area? By the way, total area doesn't always equal six, just so you know. <laughs> just so you know. The area when everything out. is six. We don't want to just put six. No, we did something wrong here, folks. Oh, no, it's the height is not that. Sorry, my, it's not the scale, but we did something wrong. Uh, this is actually four. <coughs> what now? Three times three. Over two. Nine halves. If we want to add those together, we'd get nine halves plus three halves. It's going to be 15 halves. Are you okay with the 15 halves? Mm -hmm. Sorry about that one. Yeah, that is three times three. 15 halves. We're just, you're just proving that not all areas equal six. Yes, yeah, so that's what I was doing. <laughs> that's what I was doing. I knew something didn't add up right. But, uh, my dot was uh, not exactly in the right spot. How many people feel okay with our areas so far? So geometrically speaking, this is not so bad. Rectangle, rectangle with a triangle, as long as we calculate our height, right, we can do that base times height over two. What about something like this one? This is going to look nasty until you really think about what's going on. How about that one? What's, what's it mean? What's it mean? What does an integral stand for? Area you guys over here asleep. Come on, integral, integral. Come on, integral. What's a definite integral? What are we doing here? Areas. That's what we're talking about. We're finding the area of whatever this function is, whatever that function is, whatever this function is. Now, I think Michael might have said it, but what is this function? Oh, it's not quite a circle. It's a half circle. Is the top or the bottom? Negative would be the bottom. Ergo, this would be the that's the top of the circle. A circle is plus and minus square root of uh, radius oh. minus radius squared minus x squared. So this is the top half of a circle. A radius of one. Very good. Radius of one. That right there. You okay with this so far? You sure? So this right here is that. Hey, tell me someone on the left-hand side of the room, what are my bounds of integration? Where am I starting and where am I stopping? Negative one, positive one. No, zero. Read my integral. Read my integral. So 